Yes, hello once again. Welcome back to Classic Dirt Bike TV, uh, which I understand is now being viewed in uh, more countries across the globe. So uh, if you've just uh, tuned in to CDB TV or indeed if you've just subscribed to my channel, then uh, welcome aboard and I hope you find uh, more of this kind of material to entertain you with regards uh, looking at these old uh, vintage dirt bikes. But uh, coming up next, we're going to take a look at another old uh, British classic. So if you're into your single cylinder four stroke uh, thumpers and uh, those uh, CCM bikes in particular, then I think you'll like this next feature as we dive uh, straight in and take a look at Les Calderwood's 1974 580 uh, CCM. Okay, so if you've been a regular uh, visitor to my YouTube channel and you've been a, a loyal viewer from the early days of Classic Dirt Bike TV, then you may have already come across an earlier version of this CCM from uh, back in the day. Although since then, uh, I've come across a few more details about this bike's construction. So uh, I've decided to do a more updated and comprehensive version of that previous uh, video to bring it all uh, up to date. Now, first up, this featured bike belongs to Irishman Les Calderwood, who now lives and races this bike in Scotland with the Scottish Classic Motorcycle Racing Club. And in the last few years, this bike has taken Les to a couple of championship titles and various other top three finishes. But since the start of the dreaded COVID and an increase in Les's workload at home. This bike's uh, not seen a lot of track action in the last couple of years, but uh, hopefully uh, we'll see Les and his CCM uh, back in action on the track at the start of the 2023 racing season. And so as we move on to the particulars of the bike, which is uh, actually a re-manufactured copy of the 1974 CCM bike that uh, was designed and built uh, by the great Alan Clues at his uh, Shifnal Street factory in Bolton in that year. Now this 74 bike uh, was only the second model of CCM that uh, Clues produced as uh, his first real uh, CCM bike it was the 1973 model but uh, prior to that he did build a limited amount of his Clues Strokers in 1972, uh, but those uh, Strokers were uh, made uh, before Alan Clues even registered the name Clues uh, Competition Machines. Now, as you'd expect, uh, original uh, 1974 CCM bikes are uh, very few and far between these days, and you'd be very hard pressed to come across an original one in these uh, modern times, but there still are a handful of 74s uh, scattered across the globe, although uh, the good ones are all uh, tucked away nicely in private bike collections, while other working examples are still soldiering on, but have by now lost uh, most of their original fixtures and fittings. Which is where our featured bike now takes centre stage because it's due to the aforementioned lack of the 1974 CCM models that these are now being remanufactured using the original frame designs and copies of the other components that all went towards building this 1974 four stroke race bike. And so let's just begin with the bike's chassis, which is uh, manufactured by Joe Maxwell Engineering uh, at his workshop in Dumfries in Scotland. And Joe uh, builds these frames from uh, T45 steel tubing, which is then uh, bent, shaped and braze welded uh, on a jig, but is uh, still essentially a carbon copy of the original Alan Clues frames from 1974. Now in these shots here you can get a close look at a few of the finished CCM chassis that I came across at the recent 
Drumlandrig Castle weekend and uh, these frames have all been uh, built by Joe Maxwell for customers who uh, want to go on and build their own uh, CCM bikes but uh, they look absolutely superb when they've been uh, put through their chrome plating process which of course uh, many of those early CCM chassis did have during the 1970s. And uh, just in case you're interested, uh, Joe Maxwell Engineering do supply these reproduction chassis as uh, part of a frame kit that comes uh, complete uh, with its swing arm and its steering head uh, bearings. Although it's certainly uh, worth uh, checking out the JME uh, website to see exactly what they do and uh, what kind of parts and services they supply but uh, they can be found on the internet at the address seen here at the bottom uh, of the picture. But uh, as you know the frame on the 1974 CCM was also used to store the motor's engine oil which uh, was filled uh, through this cap just behind the frame's headstock and the oil was kept in the frame's front down tube which was then pumped around the motor and then back up to the top of the frame through a return pipe. Now to filter out some of the unwanted particles from the engine oil at the bottom of the chassis we also had a small gauze type filter that you could remove and then wash with petrol before refilling in the frame with fresh oil and then refitting uh, the filter. Although many CCM owners uh, did uh, change this filtration system for a much better external uh, cartridge type uh, layout, which uh, was much more convenient and certainly uh, a lot more uh, efficient. And so moving on to our 1974 CCM power plant which is based on a BSA B50 single cylinder four stroke motor which back in the day was basically just a road going motorcycle engine that Alan Clues then retuned and reworked to give it a lot more power. So what we're looking at here is a BSA B50 SS street scrambler engine and this engine here has a bore of 90 millimeters and a stroke of 90 millimeters also which uh, roughly equates uh, to around uh, 580 uh, cc's. Now the crankshaft on this engine has been upgraded and as you can see the barrel also has been uh, definned to remove some of the barrel's uh, cooling fins for uh, reasons unknown to myself, although I suspect that this is all to do with reducing weight rather than having any kind of effect on the engine's temperature. Again, the engine has an NEB three-speed gearbox on our 74 CCM and also on the transmission side, this motor has an upgraded and improved uh, clutch just to try and help it cope uh, with the increase in power of this uh, B50 engine. Now another innovative idea from Alan Clues was to use uh, the motor's engine casings uh, to mount the bike's uh, footrest hangers rather than using the traditional method of bolting them onto the bike's uh, chassis. Now you'd think that this would place undue stress on these casings, although in uh, all of the years of CCM using this method there uh, was never a single report of casing failure and in fact uh, more often than not it was uh, the problems with the actual foot rests that gave more uh, worry than its casings. The exhaust uh, system that was fitted to these uh, B50 motors is uh, about as basic as they come with uh, just a simple big bore uh, exhaust pipe that was uh, not muffled 
in any way so you can appreciate uh, what kind of bark uh, would come out of this uh, short and stubby tailpipe that exited uh, from this right hand side of the bike just in front of that uh, rear shock. But we should be able to hear what uh, this bike sounds like if you all uh, stick around until the end uh, of the video. Now I expect that back in the day all manner of carburetors uh, would have been bolted onto this B50 engine in 1974 but uh, in this remanufactured version uh, Les uh, has a 34 mm Makuni carb that uh, he said had a 250 mm main jet and a 35 uh, millimeter pilot uh, to feed the motor uh, with its fuel. Now to screen the dust and the dirt from entering the engine, a twin air filter system is also fitted behind this alloy uh, side panel and uh, this was just a foam design that was uh, easily maintained by simply removing and then washing it before slipping it back into the alloy air box. Again, uh, to supply all the sparks for the motor's ignition, a self-contained uh, interspan ignition system is used on this CCM, which is uh, basically a removable uh, little black box that uh, houses all of the electronics and uh, rechargeable battery uh, needed to supply uh, the sparks. And normally, after a full charge, uh, this would be good enough for about four and a half to five hours of use and uh, that's why you often see these uh, CCMs wired into a 12 volt power supply at a race event because the riders uh, tended to top them up uh, between races. But switching the system on and off is uh, pretty straightforward by just inserting your finger into this hole in the side panel and operating the on and off switch. But despite these big B50 motors only having uh, three speed gearboxes, they were still uh, superb uh, motocross engines for their day that uh, they were certainly never short of power because uh, what they lacked in gears uh, they surely made up for in torque and once you uh, left the line it was just a case of opening and closing the throttle to keep the bike at the front uh, of the pack. And uh, good brakes were never required on these CCMs because uh, if you wanted to stop or even slow down, you just simply uh, shut the throttle and let the braking of that B50 motor do all uh, of the hard work for you. And so at the bike's uh, front end, it would have been uh, various types of British made suspension units that would have been originally fitted to these 74 CCMs in that year but in our case here uh, when Joe Maxwell uh, built the bike he's bolted on a pair of uh, 35 millimeter Italian uh, Marzocchi forks which uh, as conventional motorcycle suspension systems go these are still uh, pretty good forks and are uh, well suited to this big single cylinder uh, four stroke twin shocker. Now again some stock CCMs back in the day would have had magnesium top and bottom uh, fork yokes although uh, as our bike here has a pair of Italian Marzocchi's uh, fitted to it these are almost certainly uh, the Marzocchi uh, triple clamps uh, to accompany them. And because these Marzocchis didn't have a fitting to anchor the front brake uh, anchor rod, then Joe Maxwell engineered uh, this alloy clamp that bolted onto the left uh, fork stanchion uh, just to anchor the front brake uh, back plate in its place. And so as we move on to our bike's uh, front and rear brakes, which uh, are not as you'd expect, original CCM hubs as uh, as you know stock hubs are now impossible to source these days for these CCMs but uh, both the front and rear stoppers are actually uh, micro hubs 
that have had uh, their ribs machined off and then the alloy uh, polished up. Now this front brake uh, backplate is a reproduction uh, CNC machined uh, Michael part from uh, Bill Brown at Wolfsport and uh, these Michael backplates are actually uh, much better quality than the uh, German originals. Now the rear hub and brake are also uh, Michael parts and these again have been uh, relaced with new heavy duty spokes onto a pair of uh, Spanish uh, Morad alloy uh, wheels. But they all fit together very nicely on our uh, reproduction CCM and uh, these uh, surely complement all of the other nice parts fitted to our CCM. And so as we move on to the bike's rear suspension department, we have a pair of classic uh, rock shocks, which are all made here in the UK. And these uh, suspension systems have uh, quite a good reputation for quality and reliability. And uh, these are a popular choice uh, for many classic vintage and twin shock racers. And uh, of course, these uh, rock shocks can be custom made to suit the rider's uh, skill level and uh, their personal uh, weight and measurements. And uh, once more, these alloy fuel tanks are uh, simply a carbon copy of the original CCM uh, fuel tank design. And uh, as you can see here, these uh, were made uh, very slim uh, back in the day. And uh, I think these Joe Maxwell uh, fuel tanks were constructed uh, using 1.6 uh, millimeter uh, alloy uh, sheeting. And these tanks uh, came complete with that uh, locking Monza style uh, alloy uh, fuel cap as well. Now on the very first Clues competition machine in 1973, these tanks uh, would have been painted black, but uh, they were all uh, kept uh, paint free and uh, just bare metal with this nice shiny alloy in 1974. Now the bike seat once again is a modern day replica of the original CCM design and this uh, very comfortable looking seat it was well padded and it had just about the right amount of firmness to enable you to rest your backside on between uh, the bumps in the track. And with the limited amount of suspension travel that you had at the rear of these bikes, it certainly all helped towards uh, making the journey that little uh, bit smoother. But again, the rear and the front uh, mud guards are uh, remanufactured plastic items, uh, once again, based around the original 74 design and uh, actually these uh, plastic parts are just a few of the CCM components that are now easily available for these models as there's now uh, a company reproducing these plastic parts including uh, air boxes and other uh, valuable uh, components. Although reproduction or not it's still quite good to know that you can uh, get your hands on these uh, vital parts if you're uh, in the process of building uh, your very own uh, Alan Clues uh, classic. But some of the other parts fitted to Les's uh, bike, like these uh, side panels, are uh, made of alloy sheeting, and all of those uh, nice numbers and graphics uh, were supplied by Alan Reed at MXM uh, Graphics. Now the front number plate is of course made of plastic and uh, once more uh, all of those uh, nice sticky numbers and uh, letter writing is another product from uh, MXM. Now finally up at the control centre of our 74 CCM we have a pair of uh, enduro style rental 
handlebars and uh, these are fitted with a set of quite good quality alloy Magura clutch and uh, front brake levers. And to help get that big B50 single four banger engine fired up, uh, we also have a decompressor lever here as well uh, just to help uh, get that big 580cc engine into the right position uh, for starting. But for me, uh, personally speaking, uh, this is still a superb uh, looking motorbike and uh, there's definitely something about these old four-stroke CCMs that other off-road classics of the same period just don't have. And although our bike here is a reproduction copy of the original Alan Clues bike, uh, every single part and component on it uh, just seems to fit perfectly uh, together from that uh, nicely sculpted uh, chrome plated chassis uh, right down to that big single cylinder uh, B50 uh, engine. And if you've watched uh, some of my other video postings uh, on my channel down the years then you may have already witnessed uh, firsthand just how quick this bike is on the track and uh, in its way it brings back some great memories of when the likes of the great John Banks, uh, Vic Eastwood and the great uh, Norman Barrow all rode these Clues CCM racers to victory at racetracks all over Europe in those fantastic times of the great uh, 1970s. So there you have it, a very nice uh, reproduction 1974 CCM there from Les Calderwood. But don't forget to join me here on my channel again when we'll be taking a look at the mighty 1981 uh, 490 Mega 2 uh, Michael Twin Shocker. And uh, this will be my next uh, video posting here uh, on my channel. But once again, thank you all for watching my video content. So until the next time, it's uh, goodbye for now.